And first up, uh, a speaker from Australia, a young climate activist, Clover Hogan, who is the founder of Force of Nature. Let's have a listen to what she has to say. My name is Clover Hogan. I've been on this planet 21 years, and I've spent the past 10 trying to save it. I believe it's possible if we confront the threat even greater than the climate crisis, the universal feeling of powerlessness in the face of it. Having worked in both classrooms and the boardrooms of Fortune 500 companies, I've heard many stories on repeat. Stories that live in the vacuum between us wanting to make a difference and taking action. I'm just one in 7.8 billion people. I'm too small to make a difference. It's not up to me. I'm not an expert. Or the system is too broken. Our corporate leaders too short-sighted. Our politicians too corrupt. Our society too enslaved to money and status to create meaningful change. These stories hold enough truth to fuel our denial, finger pointing and inaction. Coping mechanisms when faced with a terrifying reality. We're told we have a decade to avoid runaway climate change. When natural systems start changing so fast, there is nothing we can do to stop things getting worse. We humans are supremely well equipped for a fight, flight, or with climate change, fatalistic acceptance. However, it is not too late. We have more than enough money, resources, and intelligence to deliver the solutions we've had for decades. If we understand one thing, this transformation must begin within our minds. Ardent activists, cautious corporate leaders, concerned mums and dads and anxiety ridden kids. We all have our work cut out. A hotter planet promises a hellish reality. The once apocalyptic predictions of scientists are now licking at our ankles. Rising sea levels, devastating flooding, extreme storms, dead reefs, air too toxic to breathe, food system collapse. We've seen the enormous conflict that results from the displacement of millions of refugees. This is but a trailer for the upcoming dystopian blockbuster. It is estimated that climate change will create 1 billion migrants by 2050. 1 billion. Where will they go? COVID-19 has been a timely prediction of the fortress mentality that will envelop many countries. Will our nations default to patriotism and paranoia? What is becoming abundantly clear is that we cannot solve climate change unless we also affect social change. Our relentlessly competitive neoliberal economy is built on a history rooted in social injustice, suppressed voices, the unfettered exploitation of vulnerable communities to benefit those in power but also each and every one of us in a privileged society. From the clothes on my back to the food in my fridge or the products in my home, I am responsible for the climate crisis. All the while, the system makes it near impossible to be responsible and do the right thing. We know it's useless to confront such a massive snowballing problem with stopgap solutions. Yet much of activism today is just that. When Starbucks replaces its plastic straws with paper ones, it is not addressing the systemic problem of disposable living. It's rebadging it and profiting from the attention. We make monthly donations, turn off the lights when we leave a room, these are mosquito bites on the bum of a monster that gets stronger by the day. Last year, millions of young people took to the streets in protest. The climate crisis careening from the periphery of our collective consciousness to front and center stage. Still, we are seen as too idealistic, too naive to understand how things work in the real world. We are met with pervasive greenwashing, pretty reports, full of empty promises scheduled just far enough into the future that they require no immediate change. 
When I go to the polls, I am asked to choose between a climate change denier and a seasoned procrastinator. And when I take to the streets, banner blazing, I despair that we face another 10 years of incremental change. With the science laid out before us and a history of exploitation behind us, there is no way we can possibly look to the future and justify a business as usual attitude. Our window for action is closing. A million species are headed for extinction. Children are already losing their homes in the Maldives. And children the world over are now facing the prospect of an unlivable planet. Each and every one of us, business leaders, politicians, teachers, parents, students, has the responsibility to step up rather than shut down in the face of the climate crisis. The world is only ever changed by people who have the courage to imagine it differently. So indulge me for a moment as we imagine what great leadership would look like. Starting with the businesses that touch our lives every day. Leadership would look like YouTube choosing not to platform and promote the dangerous delusions of climate deniers. Leadership would look like Facebook and Twitter weeding out its algorithmic bias and voter suppression in defense of free speech and free will when words of hate are denying the majority just that. Leadership would look like other multinationals joining Unilever in its boycott of these platforms, choosing the long-term benefit of putting their stakeholders over their shareholders across every part of value creation. Leadership would look like BlackRock acting on its commitment to divest from its oil, gas, and thermal coal reserves when it still owns more than any other investor. Of our elected officials, we must demand that they put in place policies today that limit global heating to 1.5 degrees and stop cowtailing to vested interests. We must demand that they herald in a Green New Deal and the countless jobs which will follow as governments prepare to inject trillions of dollars into the economy in the wake of the pandemic. And look beyond borders to protect the millions of people around the world already vulnerable to the climate crisis. A real leader asks, if I could solve any one problem in the world today, what would it be? Which of my unique gifts, talents, and resources can I use to solve this problem? And what will my first step be? Because each and every one of us can do that, each and every one of us can be a leader. We can't afford any more would-be's or what-ifs. The good news is that while the climate crisis might be the greatest threat we've ever faced, it's also the biggest opportunity. We have the chance to rethink so much of how we live, breathe and exist. If, when we transform society in this way, it will be the greatest feat in human history. To take a quote from Jonathan Porritt's new book, Hope in Hell, there exists a world where each of us gets a chance to be brought up lovingly, to be properly educated, to work hard and fulfill our true potential, in which today's astonishing wealth is shared so much more fairly, in which we feel secure in our communities, with decent homes and healthcare, with an expectation of being cared for as we get older, in which our local environment is kept clear, green and healthy, and the global environment is made secure for our children and all future generations. This wonderful new world is possible. I would ask you to close your eyes for a moment and imagine it. Bring this world into vivid focus. And as you sit securely in this future, think back to 2020, the year we pressed pause on our hyper-consumptive, globalized lives, the year you reached an inflection point, the year when, instead of returning to business as usual, you chose something radically different. As you sit in the future, observe what we, what you, now do differently. 
What had to change in 2020 to arrive here? Picture yourself stepping up to the challenge. Visualize the action you took over that seminal decade in human history in the first 12 months to put it into motion and the action you took immediately after hearing these words. I won't delude you. The hardest part of my work is knowing that there is every chance that not enough of us will act and that we will fail to solve the climate crisis. However, there is one thing that keeps me going. One thing I know to be true. As much as we have a great responsibility to our world, we also have a great responsibility to ourselves. I want to look back on my life and know I did everything in my power. I wielded every shred of privilege, energy, knowledge, resource, that I overcame every fear, anxiety, and moment of overwhelm to act on what I knew to be right, to make hard decisions, and do the often uncomfortable thing, to discard the belief that I am powerless, to realize that I am infinitely powerful, just as you are. Thank you.